What's up guys, this is Zach from Law by Levin and I am here with uh, Casey McGuire, the founder um, and CEO of 929 Media and Rolla Video. And he's here to talk with me about his businesses. Casey, thanks for being here. Um, thanks for inviting me, Zach. Yeah, awesome. Um, give us a quick plug. Like, tell us 30 seconds. What is 929 and like, what is Rolla? Yeah, yeah. For the last seven years, I've been uh, operating a business called 929 Media. It's a video production company, and we focused on basically productizing videos in the real estate space. So these are uh, working with real estate agents to create uh, property tours, agent profile videos, neighborhood guides, market update videos. Um, we've been doing that for the last few years. Um, but have since segued to a new business that spun uh, out of 929 because of COVID um, and just figure out how to sort of adapt to the, the changes that we were seeing as a business and launch something brand new. Cool. So I think what's really interesting about your business and, and you in particular is that a lot of entrepreneurs I talk to, I think what's drive, they come from big corporations typically where they start their careers, banks, consulting firms, and they really want to be entrepreneurs. And that, they have an idea what they really want to be as entrepreneurs. And that's what drives them to make the leap. I feel like for you, it's a little bit different. You already were an entrepreneur and actually a pretty successful one. Like 929 is a, is a pretty successful, profitable business. And then for some reason, I, I know it's partly COVID related for sure, you kind of wanted to push it even further and you launched into this like tech focused business in Rolla. Talk a little about that process. Like what's, why do you keep pushing the limits? Like what's driving you? No, I think being an entrepreneur is, is, is all about being outside your comfort zone. Like something we're doing right now. I'm, I'm usually behind the camera um, filming these things and I love these guys because they kind of, you know, they make you, make you try something new. And uh, so this is a great experience for me too. And I think speaks to, yeah, anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur has to go outside their comfort zone and try, try new things. Um, when I was growing up, I was a musician, uh, writing music, really putting yourself out there um, yeah. in front of people, uh, being creative. That's not something that um, you know, is super easy to do, um, especially at an early, early age. Um, and so that's what I had focused on when I was starting. And then I did a lot of other cool things with, with my life as I was growing up. I was selling Cutco knives, doing sales, um, you know, and, then, and then eventually started this company, uh, 929 Media. Yeah, no, that's helpful. And I think one of the other things I wanted to explore a little bit is the difficulty, because 929 um, is like sort of one-off production shoots, mm -hmm. and uh, roll of video is a little bit something more where it's supposed to work at scale, where like you build a product that someone can come in and it's a little bit more plug and play, where you could have a million people on the platform. Mm -hmm. What are the stressors that's a little bit different from building that sort of business versus 929? Uh, very different businesses, but they're, they're very much the same too. I mean, we, we always knew for years that we wanted to figure out a subscription model to video content. It's a very difficult thing to do because you're you're going out, you're shooting, you're producing, you're editing, and it's all the unit, unit, unit stuff. Um, but with Rolla, we we wanted to pretty much decentralize the video production process, and we really untangled the web of like basically saying there's a, there's a certain types of shots that you get in a video. There's certain types of videos that all companies need. Um, let's figure out a way to to develop a system that can sort of horizontally integrate to multiple multiple businesses offering them video products that make sense for all of them across the board and <clears throat> we started thinking ways to decentralize the process by outsourcing the actual one of the hardest parts of, of the process which is just capturing the video content so with Rolla we started working with real estate agents training them how to use the most powerful tool in their pocket their cell phone to shoot 4k resolution video with our help now we're putting it in their hands and we're saving them a ton of money and we're empowering them to, to work, to, to be better content creators, essentially. Cool. Um, you know, you were, like we already talked about earlier, you had a successful business before we ever met and we met a couple of years ago, but I think it's interesting that you came into my orbit when you shifted from nine to nine to thinking about Rolla. And you actually came to me with a business before Rolla um, that you were gonna get into as well. Another tech focused, high growth concept. And so what drew you to me? Like if you had an existing business that was going well, why when you wanted to grow high growth, did you come into my orbit? How did you find me? Like what was that process? Well, like I said, you always, you always want to do better, right? So the next project that I took on, I knew that I needed to make changes that I, that I, to improve what I had built previously. And um, something that I felt I needed more of in my previous business was uh, advisorship, mentorship, um, counsel. 
And the minute I met you guys and your team, it became clear to me that, well, first of all, just like finding a lawyer to like help you start your business and the way you guys helped me approach this process has been like exponential value. It's not just, hey, these guys are my legal team. There's a lot more value I've gotten out of you guys and comes from a friendship and an understanding of sort of sympathizing with what it means to be a, a, a founder and a startup. Um, and I had never raised any money before. All the businesses that I've operated have been you know, self-funded and, and, and I've been you know, reinvesting money back into my businesses. Basically everything up until Rolla has been a research and development project for this moment. Um, and I think uh, I came to you guys because I knew that I needed to make sure I was, I was taking the right steps and protocol to, to, to launch this business properly and to, to be prepared to raise capital. Yeah. Um, that was a big reason why I came to you guys. That's pretty typical um, that I hear is that like when people are ready to raise money, it puts your business in a very different framework yeah. um, because you are used to being client focused with the way you design everything. It's like employees, clients, imagine that relationship. Once you bring in investors, you're bringing in a whole nother element into your business that you need to triangulate for. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's like, how do I weigh the importance of investors, clients, and staff or employees? And I think that's the piece that maybe you needed my guidance on. Yes. Is that, that third leg of your business. Navigating those kind of conversations um, and never having had them before, um, but having intuition and like running a business and having teams to manage and, and, and um, and operate um, and clients to serve. I mean, lo just learning how to take everything that I've done over the last seven years in, in my business and, and, and work with you guys to figure out a way to communicate it properly to investors and advisors and to build a team and an organization, that was really, really important to me and you guys have helped me in ways that you know, it's hard to even explain. You know, one of the ways I first knew, um, so like when you're a law firm or any service provider, any company really, you always sort of categorize your clients, like who am I really betting on that's like gonna make me famous one day because I'm gonna like hitch my trailer to their star. And it became pretty obvious early on that I was gonna do that with you and that you were gonna be a big deal and in turn I was gonna be a big deal. And one of the ways I knew that is because when you first came to me, you actually didn't know a lot about investors and the structures and the documents and the conversations and it was kind of a blank slate. Um, what I found most impressive is actually like a couple weeks ago, um, I got really busy in the middle of an investor conversation and you took over the email chain and responded to the investors and you wrote them like a pretty complex email and I read that and I go, wow, that's exactly what I would have written. Um, and those are really complicated concepts and conversations and like over a matter of a couple months, you picked up those really dense concepts and were able to write them in an email, live action, with a client. That was really impressive. No, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it if I hadn't, um, if you guys hadn't continually given me the time of day to answer my questions, right? I'm, I'm a pretty inquisitive guy and I wanna make sure I know something before I execute on it. And so b being able to have that open line of conversation with you guys consistently, um, has allowed, you know, allowed me to, to, to make a move like that and will continue to allow me to make more moves like that. Um, but you guys were so helpful early on in getting me set up in a way to, to be able to approach that conversation in a way that I did. Um, and so I'm very grateful for, for that. Cool. And I think we actually have a really interesting, well, first it does start, by the way, with like our trust, which I think we've established. And partly we established that because you and I went on a boat ride together. Yeah. You actually were with your family and like your dad and sister and, and, and soon to be wife at the time. And you brought me and my family on the boat with you. And that was actually a really nice bonding moment. But we have a really nice line of communication. And I think it's been interesting how um, when projects come up, there, there's an open line of communication about, you know what, Zach, I'm really busy. You take the project um, and just get over the finish line for me or Zach you've taught me enough now, I can just carry this the rest of the way. And it's a very free flowing conversation where you feel like, I, I feel like you can use me just for like the value oriented services. And you, you are very much in control of the costs and like my time spent. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys are participating in ways that always exceed my expectations, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's times where I know I need an answer to a question and you guys provide that answer, but there's gonna be a little extra context you'll give me at the bottom of that email to prepare me for the next dialogue that I'm gonna have. Um, and it's really important to have that kind of, um, yeah, you're right, I mean, it's, it comes with, with, with trust and friendship and, and believing in each other, right? Um, you know, I'm always respectful of people's time. I, I, when I was at 929, I didn't really have, like, um, I wasn't paying lots of lawyers and accountants and uh, people to kind of serve me in my business. And now with Rolla, um, 
that is the case. And so I'm also, I'm realizing I'm kind of menschy, you know, in that way too. And how I want to make sure that the people who are serving me are also happy and there's a, a circular positive relationship and we're all um, being respectful of each other and not overstepping. And Yeah, actually, I actually found that to be true, by the way. Um, there is a tendency to just demand of your service providers and not build a relationship. And you definitely approach this like, you and I are working together. I'm not working for you, we're working together. And I think that's propelled our ability to openly communicate forward. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how I run my business too. I, I, I work for my employees, you know, I, I, they're the people I work for, right? They're, they're the people that um, I have to answer to and, and, um, and I'm there to exceed their expectations and help them too. So it's all very cyclical with how, you know, I think about business and it's been interesting being on the receiving end of paying people to help me with, with my business and understanding how to um, allow you guys the best opportunity to advise me in the best way possible. To, to, to have immediate results, um, you know, when we have problems we need to solve. Cool. Um, the other thing I, I, I was curious to ask you about is like, I think when you're trying to build a high growth business, there's just constant existential crisis, which is how much do I focus on dollars in today, which I know I can get, versus like how much do I invest in building for the future? Mm -hmm. um, and if I build for the future, then I need investor dollars. How do you think about that trade off? And does it keep you awake at night? <laughs> for, for me, I've never raised the kind of money that we want to raise to, to bring roll into the next uh, to the next level. So for me, it's it's proof of concept. Before I even go to that extent of thinking about raising that money, I want to make sure that I have something that I can show for that isn't just you know we're not a couple guys walking in a room and saying we got this big great idea like what do you think check it out. I'm a, I want to tangibly show someone that we've created something and it's proving uh, the future. Um, and so for me, it's about generating revenue before I go and have those conversations and take that kind of money from, from anyone, um, whether they have exponential amount of money to burn or not. Um, anyone hands me any sort of money, I want to make sure that they know exactly what we're going to do with it, how we're going to execute. I want to prove that I have a, a, a working product right now. And that's just, uh, that's just really important for me um, to be able to prove before I take someone else's money. So the other thing I think facing a lot of entrepreneurs, particularly people in your, your seat, is like you are projecting strength to investors, mm -hmm. to your staff, to your clients, that we've got this all figured out. Well, on the back end, you, know, you, are, um, you don't always fully see the future. Um, businesses are always more complicated than you project to the outside world. So you're, it can get very lonely when you're projecting strength to everyone while dealing what you have to do sitting at the top. Yeah, I mean, you guys are more than just lawyers to me. You're my doctor, my, my fireman, you know? You're, uh, you, you just, you, you, yeah, you check so many other boxes aside from just like calling and needing some legal advice on things. So yeah, you gotta show strength to the people that, uh, that you're, you're facing every day to give you the money and, pay for your services and the advisors to, to answer to them, board members, your, you know, your, your, your employees, your, your core team. Um, but you need, you need to have those vulnerable moments um, because they'll make you stronger ultimately. And so to be able to turn around and have very honest and open dialogues with you guys about problems I'm having, um, high level and low level simple stuff, um, it's, it's, it's invaluable. And the more, we, the more we work and grow together, the more successful I think uh, our company will be and I think the more you'll take away with the new clients that you work with and how you approach dealing with them too So again, I, I really treat our relationship as um, As us all kind of mutually benefiting and learning from from one another um, But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good to be vulnerable um, with uh, the people who are gonna give you the right answers You know, I don't need to put on I don't want to put on a front to my accountant I don't want to put on a front to my legal team. Um, I want to make sure they know exactly what's happening um, so that they can give me the best advice. Cool, and last question. I know that, um, like me, during COVID, you've really relocated from the New York area to the Florida area. Yeah. What has that been like for you? Have you, I felt the energy coming down here. If there's a indiscernible New York vibe about Miami and like where people are going with their businesses, that it's, it's like palpable in New York, the way people feel about their businesses. That, and I'm feeling that here in Florida, Miami too. I don't know if you've gotten the same sense coming down here. I mean, it's nice to get tan and do work at the same time, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, uh, but the whole reason why we built Rolo was to, again, decentralize the video production process. So we forced ourselves to build a fully remote company. So my co-founder is in Lake Tahoe. My dev team is in Brooklyn. Our customer success reps are in Austin, Texas. Um, our editor marketplace we built is literally everywhere across the whole planet. So 
For me being in Miami, it's again, an uncomfortable thing to do, be down here, learn from it, and just fight through it and come out on top. So being fully remote for us is, it was 100% our intention, and I could have stayed in New York. Um, that's, where my, that's where my production team in 929 is located. A majority of my clients are there. But um, no, I want to force myself to, to run, a C, run a company as CEO fully remotely and see how we do with it. Cool, and I built my team the same way, and I think we've still been able to work very seamlessly. Even though you and I are constantly dotting the country, my team's in Santa Fe, New Mexico, they're you know, internationally located, they're in Israel, they're in New York, they're in Florida, but I feel like you and I have still been able to maintain, because we're both our companies are both very remote, very electronic, so I don't think it's ever really slowed us down. From moving our goals forward. No, and being in production with 929, so much of our business was travel related. We were working with hotels and we were doing travel jobs and working with high net worth individuals who had multi-million dollar homes across the country. Uh, so travel and operating the simultaneously is something that I've just been used to. Um, so it's, and it's, I was talking to your partner Levy uh, earlier um, today about how it's also kind of a, it's a flex in a way too to your, to your clients and to investors and advisors who are like, what do you mean you guys are like raising money and operating your business completely remote? Like two years ago, that would sound kind of crazy. Um, but to, to say that we're on the forefront of that process, I, I, I think speaks volumes to people who are gonna invest in us. That's how I feel as well. Like I don't think you hesitated when I told you I was leaving New York City. Yeah. I don't remember you feeling hesitant about it. And that was the bet I was making that I, I used to anchor myself to New York City that I was a New York City lawyer. And I feel like you never hesitate when I told you, well, I'm gonna hop the country. Well, Casey, I really appreciate you sitting down with me today. I have been impressed with you from the moment I met you. And like all founders, it's always execution over ideas. And every month you come to me with another layer of progress on your business. And it's so impressive to see how the innovation with you never stops. And I just, I can't wait to see where your business gets three, four, five years from now. There, there literally is no ceiling for you. I appreciate that, Zach, it means a lot. And, and you know, something, something again with, with, with your company, I wanna make sure you, you, know, you know how I feel too, is uh, I, I love the fact that um, you, the way you work with me seems like the way you work with lots of your other clients. And, and you've been able to introduce me to people that I would have never otherwise been able to, to touch. So, um, you guys are, are also incredibly helpful in helping me expand my business and grow with the connections and the network that you've, you've helped uh, provide me. So I just want to thank you guys for that as well.